Okay. Okay, students. Uh, this time it was for Jaime Ernesto Hernandez Navarrete, but I think he's not going to be here because today class he was not there. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna play a video for you, right? In order to understand the use of can and cannot, because we have to um, aprovechar el tiempo. Así que let's go. Voy a poner un video para que cuando eh, vean esta clase de refuerzo les pueda servir mucho, right? Okay, let me see. This is the video that we're gonna watch is the use of can. Please pay full attention to this. Welcome to twominuteenglish.com, teaching you English through two minute lessons. In this lesson, we will study the correct usage of can in a conversation. Can is a modal auxiliary verb. It's used to express certain meanings. For example, possibility, ability, request, or permission. Mark, why don't you give me some examples? I can leave my car in that parking space. Okay, you're saying that you'll possibly leave your car there. Can you help me with my work? This is a good one because it's an informal request. We're friends, so it's appropriate. Can I smoke in this room? Now you've just used can to ask for my permission to do something. You can't smoke in here. Please go outside. Okay, I understood. You use the negative, which means I don't have permission to smoke in here. That is correct. Now let me give you an example, Mark. I can speak Portuguese. Can you? No, I cannot. It's cool that you have the ability to speak in Portuguese. I can only speak English. Now let's see some sample conversations. Hey, Jamie, can you help me out with something? Yes, I can. I just need to finish some work here first. No problem. When will you be free? In a half hour or so. Okay, I can wait that much. I'll be outside. Can you play any instruments, Gary? No, I cannot. Can you? Yes, I can play the guitar. That's great. I myself can't play any instruments, but I can sing well. Yes, you can. I've heard you before. The truth is I love music, and I can memorize things fast, so I know many lyrics by heart. I can see now why you always have some music on. Yes, I can live without good music. I can leave my car in that parking space. Can you help me with my work? Can I smoke in this room? You can't smoke in here. I can speak Portuguese. No, I cannot. I can wait that much. Can you help me out with something? Can you play any instruments, Gary? I myself can't play any instruments, but I can sing well. Welcome to twominuteenglish.com, teaching you English through two minute lessons. In this lesson, we will study the correct usage of can in a conversation. Can is a modal auxiliary verb. It's used to express certain meanings. For example, possibility, ability, request, or permission. Mark, why don't you give me some examples? I can leave my car in that parking space. Okay, students, really good. Um, basically, we were um, talking about can for permission and obligation, and that was the video related to, right? I think uh, we're going to wait for the uh, lot of the students. Let's see. Okay, here we go. 
Okay, give me a minute. <clears throat> Okay, we're gonna wait for the second student. Okay, students, uh, try to uh, aprovechar esta clase de refuerzo. It's for you guys, and you have to try to be here in order to improve and practice your English knowledge and skills, right? Okay. I'm gonna wait a minute.
<laughs> okay, okay, students. I'm gonna share the link para que puedan ingresar to the WhatsApp, right? Okay. Okay. Hola. Hello, hello, Miguel. Hi. Yo, fíjate que yo, yo tengo unas preguntas. Yeah, yeah. Eh, fíjate que con el material, el material lo puedo descargar porque ese, de, de ese sí no, no, no sabía que se tenía que descargar o, o obtener material. Ok, ok, that's good, Miguel. Ok, eh, I'm going to share the, my screen, right? Le voy a compartir mi, mi mi pantalla ahí para que pueda observar. En la plataforma va a aparecer algo así. Ok, bueno, go back. Vamos a ir aquí más atrás. Miguel López, let's see. Eh, Le va a aparecer algo así. Algo así. You can see? Sí. Yeah, right? Sí. Entonces acá tienen todas las sections. Usted se va acá donde dice Students Manual. Right? Entonces, mm. un clic. Damos clic acá, Students Manual, right? Y acá le va a cargar, esperamos que cargue y ahí está. Usted lo puede ver online, or you can download, o pueden descargar. Ah, ok. Sí, entonces acá, en esta pestaña le da clic y ya se está descargando automáticamente. Right? Mm. Ok, ok, eh, Miguel, eh, I don't know if you have. Another question about the class? Everything is clear? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, another question. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the class are uh, Monday, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. No, only Friday. Uh, uh, days. Five days per week. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Mail say, say, say Friday and Saturday. And Saturday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is the, the, the another question. And the classroom is uh, well, very well. Uh, okay. I, I learned so much and I understand many, many topics. I under, uh, I, I understand uh, topics I understand before. Okay, okay. Really good. Uh, that's, that's what I want to do, right? That you understand and you, you know, taste English like a baby, a step by a step, right? Yeah, it's correct. Okay, that's good. Uh, what about the the use of has to or have to? It's okay? Yeah, it's okay. It's, it's really easy. It's pretty easy, yeah. but uh, sometimes uh, when you use uh, he uh, we uh, maybe it's confused because the system mm -hmm. uh, is not defined where uh, Tom, Tom sometimes is he or is you. 
So okay, okay. Uh, it depends the context of the Okay, that's good. Yeah, uh, as you see, uh, when we are talking about uh, the personal pronouns, uh, we're going to find the third person. Third person. Uh, third person, we can find she, he, and it. Ahí en el chat se lo escribí. She, he, and it. Right? Uh, that's the third person. Esas son las terceras personas. Casi siempre nos van a dar problemas. But with the third person, what we have to do is simple, right? Eh, con las terceras personas vamos a utilizar has to. Y si vamos a negar, doesn't have to. Doesn't. Y con el resto va a ser don't. Don't, right? ¿Sí? Don't, ok. Ok, ok, really good. And what about ahí Miguel López, uh, the use of can? Can. Uh, fine. Fine. Yeah. Uh, it's not different. Uh, are many things where it has, and can't, and I try to uh, be in order. Okay, okay. Separate. Okay, okay, that's good. But I don't know if you have a question about that. <clears throat> no, no, it's okay. It's okay? Okay, yeah. we'll be good. <clears throat> okay, <laughs> nice. You are a smart student, right? Uh, I don't think so, but I try to, to understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, amazing. Okay, uh, Miguel Lopez, vamos a aprovechar the time, right? Eh, because algunos pues no han entrado, así que tenemos ahí unos minutitos. Eh, ok, give me a minute. Creo que tengo acá. Ok, let me see. I think I have it here. Yesterday class. In yesterday class, we, um, we saw something really, really important about the third person, right? Uh, let me see. Third person. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Miguel, eh, vamos a compartir ahí rapidito eh, the use of this, right? Eh, de, de esto me mencionaba usted, right? Miguel? Sí, uh, ahorita está empezando a. This one, right? Ya, ya puede ver the slide presentation. Yeah. Yeah, ok. Entonces tenemos the personal pronouns. Esto es bien simple. Is, uh, I'm going to try to explain you as lo más fácil posible. Ok, tenemos I. What, what is I? Uh, yo. Ok, you. Tú. We. Nosotros. They. Ellos. Ok, entonces, si usted nota acá, todos estos son plurales, a excepción de I. A excepción de I. Entonces, eh, acá cuando hablamos de esto, el verbo iría en su forma infinitiva, normal. Mm, bueno, yeah. ok. Pero, when we talk about the third person, cuando hablamos de las terceras personas, eh, sería he, what is he? Eh, sería él. Ok, she. Ella. Ok, and it. Eso. Eso, una cosa. ¿Por qué son terceras personas? Terceras personas porque si yo hablo con usted directamente y usted me dice, mire, fíjense que ella hizo esto, ella lo otro. Nosotros somos dos personas hablando. Y ya ella se convierte en... Tercera. Tercera, muy bien, muy bien. Lo mismo pasa si habláramos del gatito o del chuchito, right se convierte en tercera persona. Estamos hablando de nosotros dos. Si usted me dice, mire, le doy de esta comida. I feed this cat with this and this and this. Third person. Lo mismo sucede con he. Y fíjese que él es así, él es allá. Y se convierte en tercera persona. Las terceras personas, we're gonna change the verb. Vamos a cambiar el verbo. Por, en lugar de have, va a ser has. Has. Y si negamos, y si negamos, Normalmente sería don't or do not. Right? 
Y eh, en tercera persona sería doesn't. Does. Doesn't. O does not. Does not. Pero nótese que algo sumamente importante. En este caso, si usted nota acá, cuando negamos, vuelve a quedar have to en lugar de has to. ¿Por qué sucede esto? Uh, por el, 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 el auxiliar del doesn't. Ok, del doesn't, right. En este caso ya está agarrando la regla de las third person. De las okay. terceras personas. Entonces, solo se puede usar una vez la regla y luego vuelve el verbo normal. Ya. Yeah. Yeah. Ok, ok, really good. Ok, eh, Miguel, I don't know if you have... Uh, more questions? No, it's okay. It's okay, it's okay, okay, really good. Okay, it's a pleasure to see you again. Uh, that's it for this class. See you tomorrow, right? And please try to be on time. Thank okay. you. Good night. Okay, good night, bye bye. Bye. Okay, I'm gonna wait for the rest of the students, right? Okay, if you cannot see uh, somebody else connected in these Zoom uh, classes, it's because all my students are really, really smart. They don't have any questions about uh, our classes. Okay, but we're gonna wait for the rest of them. <clears throat> okay, I'm waiting for my students, right? Okay. Okay, mientras eh, se agregan las demás uh, estudiantes, I'm gonna try to make a feedback about yesterday class. Okay, let's see. Okay, we were talking about with um, uh, Miguel about the third person, right? Most of the time we're gonna find out um, difficult part in this, 
But uh, really, to be honest, it's really simple because when we find third person, what we have to do is um, normally the verb gonna change. Sometimes gonna add an S, sometimes va uh, cambiar de forma. Muchísimo like this, ha, has. Otras veces solo agregamos una S in this way. In some more ways. Okay. And let me see. Okay. This is really important. Uh, you have to you have to understand how to give short answers sometimes because uh, when we ask questions, uh, we feel nervous when we want to answer something. So that's why we're gonna start with short answers. How are you gonna do it? Uh, if you ask with do, you have to ask with do. If somebody asks you with does about the third person, you have to ask with does, right? It's simple. The same happen if you want to give a negative answer. You have to answer if somebody asks you with do, you have to answer with do not. If somebody asks you about does, Related to third person, you have to answer with does not or doesn't. Don't, doesn't. How come? Let's see something important. Imagine, a student, that somebody asks you about this. Do you have to go to school tomorrow? Do you have to go to school tomorrow? It is a simple question. Y está siendo directo hacia usted. Si usted va a ir a la escuela mañana, do you go? Okay, do you have to go to school tomorrow? A possible answer, in short answer could be, si le están preguntando con do, responda con do. Si es positiva, si es negativa, sería con don't o do not. En mi caso, si voy a ir, si alguien me pregunta si voy a ir a la escuela mañana, do you have to go to school tomorrow? Voy a contestar honestamente, Eh, lo más sincero que pueda y sería no I don't ¿por qué uso don't y no doesn't? porque la pregunta fue para eh, mi persona en este caso you entonces con you vamos a utilizar do y si es negativo don't right ok but imagine that somebody asking me something related to a lady or a gentleman, right? Si me está preguntando acerca de una chica o un caballero, y es una tercera persona, incluso de un animalito o cosa. Pero en este caso, we are talking about have to go to school tomorrow. So that's why we're going to omit this uh, personal pronoun, right? Okay, Wendy, hello. Hello, Wendy. How are you? Hola. <laughs> ya con sueño. <laughs> <laughs> so do I, so do I. Don't worry. Okay, ya con mucho sueño, right? Okay, Wendy, uh, aquí estábamos aplicando que eh, when you, when somebody asks you with does, cuando alguien mm -hmm. nos pregunte con does, vamos a responder con does, right? Imagínense que eh, estamos hablando nosotros de, de alguna compañera que nosotros tenemos Y usted me pregunta, eh, mire, teacher, does she have to go to school tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Y si voy a responder algo positivo, voy a utilizar das. Si me preguntan con das, respondo con das. Yes, she does. Pero como yo sé que no va a ir a la escuela porque están cerradas, entonces sería no. No, she, she don't. Doesn't. Doesn't. That's a really good. Mm -hmm. Bien simple. Si nos preguntan con tú, vamos a responder con tú. Si nos preguntan con mm -hmm. that, con that, right? Mm -hmm. Ok, muy bien. Ok, Wendy. Eh, I'm glad to see you today here, right? Thanks for your time. I don't know if you have a question. No. Questions? It's clear mm -hmm. the use of have. Uh, have. Yo tenía una pregunta de ahora. Ok, ok. Voy a... Era cuando, bueno, ahí como me conecté después porque estoy en una capacitación y al viernes termino. Okay. De 8 a 9 y después me conecto a la clase. 
pero este, acá en la, donde explicaban los compañeros de las conexiones, yes. eso no me quedó muy claro. Donde oh. usamos also, and y addiction, creo que me dijeron. Okay. Addiction, yes. Ah. Okay. okay, Wendy. Uh, give me a minute. I'm going to um, look for the slide presentation for the class about this. Okay, I got it. Okay. I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay, here we go, right? Eh, okay, eh, estas son unas palabras importantes that you have to know. Vamos a explicarlas todas. Eh, tenemos in my experience. Sería en español. En mi experiencia. Muy bien, in my case. En mi caso. Okay, really good. Eh, this one. In my opinion, my opinion. Okay, muy bien. Y luego teníamos el enlace, sería en. I. Bien, then. Es I. Ok, I, muy bien. Then. then también es esa, no. Ok, ok. Eh, then es entonces o luego. Ah, entonces, entonces o luego. Entonces. Ah, ok. Pero me lo voy a apuntar que eso no me la podía. Okay. <laughs> Or for example, if I say, then uh, we are going to continue with today's class. Okay. Also, es también. Yeah, that one es también. Okay. In oh. addiction, addiction, o adición, en la adición. In addition, es como además. Mm. Uh, I'm going to talk about why these words are really important. Ese, ese va a ser para unir, digamos, oraciones. Oraciones, muy bien. ¿Por qué se las he puesto acá? Eh, recuérdense que ustedes son buenos armando oraciones. Ya tienen un previous knowledge. Tienen mm. un previo. Entonces, eh, lo que necesito acá es de que ustedes, you can join all of those mm. Ustedes son capaces de unir la UF, van a hablar rapidísimo. Mm, okay. eh, pues, ¿Y, en, ¿Y en qué momento se usan? O sea, cuando... Porque a, a mí mi problema quizás es que yo pienso en español y luego pasarlo a inglés, vea, y creo que no es como lo correcto. Ok, eso es muy mm -hmm. importante, Wendy. Eh, mm -hmm. Realmente no, no habría una explicación de que Deje de pensar en español y piensa en inglés. Es mentira. Usted mismo va a vivir de acuerdo a su conocimiento. Por muy uh -huh. poco que sea el conocimiento que uno tenga, si usted lo maneja muy bien, no va a pensar en español. ¿Dónde está la clave? En manejar o manipular esa información de la forma correcta. Uh -huh. Veamos un ejemplo. Eh, en la clase de ayer veíamos el uso de has to y have to. Has. Uh -huh. Dígame dos cosas que usted tiene que hacer en su trabajo, cualesquiera que usted desee. En inglés. Uh, I, I have a baking every day. Okay. I have in conversation different people oh. in my work. Okay. Uh, I have um, driving in my work. Okay, okay, that's good. Ahí, ahí, hold on. Uh -huh. Sí, Wendy. Entonces acá, ok, vamos a dejar esto uh -huh. para que eh, nos comprendamos mejor. Eh, uh -huh. Cuando nosotros decimos hay, ya no sería has to porque es para la tercera persona. Uh -huh. Sería have. 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 have yes. Por ejemplo, uh -huh. eh, la primera usted me decía, I have to, I have to bake. To bake. Ajá. Right. Uh -huh. Yes, every day, right? Every day. Okay, that's good. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I I have a speak a different people. Okay, okay. Ahí. Eh, recuérdense cuando utilizamos have es un verbo, right? Ajá. Uh -huh. Speak. ¿Es verbo o no? Sí. Yes. Tenemos uh -huh. dos verbos. 
cuando tenemos dos verbos juntos, vamos a utilizar una partícula que se llama to. Y o. To. Yes. Uh -huh. Y el have, estamos viendo que para obligación, vamos a utilizar have to, unido. Have to. No se va a despegar. Tiene su espacio, pero no se va a despegar el have to. Right? O sea, de, menciona el verbo, de ahí el to, o antes to. Y después. Es, I have después del verbo. To speak with my to. client. Yes. Uh -huh. Ah. I have to okay. speak. Entonces ahí se está convirtiendo en una obligación. ¿Por qué? Porque usted dice, yo tengo que hablar. ¿Qué? Uh -huh. Porque I have to speak with my customer, with my client, whatever you want. Uh -huh. Right? Ok, el verbo de la otra. Eh, la otra, ya no me acuerdo. Ah, I have drive in my work. To my work. Uh -huh. Working o work? Work. 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 Ok, entonces ven de ahí, eh, le hace falta algo. I have to. Yes. I have to drive in my work. In my work. In my work. Yes. Ah, okay. ok, entonces three sentences, right? La primera, eh, usted se recuerda, y la segunda también. ¿Qué vamos a hacer mm -hmm. ahora? Ahora intente unirlas con las de conexión. Con las conexiones de Ten, Ols, Olson y Nadiction. Nadiction, whatever you want. Cualquiera que usted considere. Ah, bueno. <laughs> I have, I have baked to every day. I have to uh, every day. I Every day, then, um, sacar. Ok, then, la otra oración que me dijo. No, no, ah, no. then, uh, different, different to speak people. Then, I have to speak. Uh -huh. uh -huh. To drive. No, espérenme, espérenme, ya me confundí. <laughs> Veamos acá, vamos a ver. Vamos a hacer algo. Vamos a aprovechar este tiempo. Bueno, ya. la verdad que cuando estamos acá explicando, a mí como me encanta esto, no siento el tiempo, right? Ajá. Okay. Mire, y tiene, digamos, o esa presentación donde están la, las conexiones están en la plataforma. Sí, todo se sube a la plataforma, los videos. Ay, que no, no he podido entrar a la plataforma. Eh, Me eh, pide un correo que, que asigna inglés corporativo cuando quiero ingresar. Ok, entonces ahí, eh, Wendy, para una mayor efectividad de eso, mándenme a WhatsApp. Eh, que uh -huh. no puedo entonces, eh, el administrador del grupo me va a apoyar con eso para que usted pueda ingresar a la plataforma, ¿te parece? Sí, porque, sí, porque cuando me meto en el enlace... Eh, me aparece eso, que me pide un correo asignado por inglés corporativo. Ok, ok. Sí, es normal que se lo va a pedir. Ok, Wendy, vamos otra vez. Ahí. Uh -huh. eh, me decía que era la primera oración. I, I, have, have, I have to baking, bake every, every day. day. Uh -huh. Every day. Ok, muy bien. Every day. La segunda eh, es... Luego sería then... Okay. Ah, no, sin conexiones. I have, I to, have to speak different people. Different people, okay. People. I have to drive. To drive to my, to my work. Workplace. No, okay. Workplace. workplace. Ok, entonces acá, Wendy, ¿por qué uh -huh. es importante las palabras de conexión? Eh, imagínese que usted, yo le digo, Wendy, eh, what do you have to do at your workplace? ¿Qué tienen que hacer en su lugar de trabajo? Ah, y usted me dice, mire, teacher, en mi caso, ¿cómo diría en mi caso? En mi caso. <risa> in, in my, in Cas, cas, se my, pronuncia. In my case. In my case. In my case. I have to baking every day. 
Okay. Then ha I have to speak with different people. Yes. Also, also I have to my break place, workplace. Okay, also I have to drive to my workplace. Really good. Entonces, Wendy, ¿cómo sonó eso? ¿Sonó más diferente o sonó más...? Más como un poquito más fluido. Yeah, yeah, really good. Uh -huh. Si usted maneja esas palabras de enlace en las prácticas, meta, úselas. Okay. Eh, entre más tiempo la, las utilice, más fácil va a ser entrelazar. ¿Y qué uh -huh. es lo que eh, Most of the time, uh, we want to translate into English what we think uh -huh. in Spanish. La mayor parte del tiempo queremos traducir todo lo que uh -huh. en inglés. Uh -huh. Y el inglés no funciona así. ¿Por qué? Uh -huh. Porque en inglés hay cosas que no las podemos traducir tan literal. Uh -huh. ¿Sí? Tan literal. Entonces vamos a ir paso a paso. Paso a paso. Uh -huh. Para no... Este, sí, es... porque yo me recuerdo que en el, en el nivel 2 nos decían también que habían como preposiciones. Ok, ya. Yeah. Que... Ajá. Que, que también unen las, las frases. Muy bien, yes. Uh -huh. sí, es, todo eso va enlazado. Eh, preposiciones uh -huh. son ocho partes del, del, del lenguaje que se deben de aprender. Pero uh -huh. eh, en inglés corporativo, con esa forma, vamos a intentar adaptárselo lo más práctico que se pueda. Si usted nota, eh, hablamos un poquito de gramática y luego la práctica. Uh -huh. Porque uh -huh. tiene que sentirse free of do whatever you want. Libre okay. de hacer lo que ustedes deseen y que pase el día. Okay. Y la mayoría eh, hace un montón de oraciones. Me hace más de las que yo les pido. Y eso está genial. Eh, ¿Qué vamos a ir puliendo? Entrelazarla. Entrelazarla. Okay. ok. Ahora, eh, aprovechando el tiempo ahí, vamos a, eh, a ver los usos con Ken. Con Ken pasa lo mismo. Va a utilizar. Uh -huh. Dígame dos cosas que puede y dos cosas que you cannot do at the workplace. Ya utilizando así eh, las palabras de enlace. <risa> ya las tenía anotadas. Okay. Pero no sé si está correcto porque yo lo había colocado. I cannot make calls inside the production centers and, and I cannot chat. Nice. Ok, muy bien. Eh, ahí hay palabras de conexión. Ok, dígalo otra vez. One more time, please. I cannot make calls inside the production centers and I cannot chat. I cannot chat. And the things that you can do, ¿qué puede hacer? ¿Qué puede hacer? ¿Qué puede hacer? Ah, eso sí se puede todo. I can drink coffee taste production and, and samples and I can conversation. Oh, okay. Amazing. <laughs> okay, entonces, uh, Wendy, as you see, electron force is going to be right when you speak. Se le corta. It's going to be really, really easy for you, right? Uh -huh. Okay, more questions? No. no. Solo, la, solo lo del al chat individual se lo mando. Eh, no, al chat del, del, del normal. Del grupo. El grupo, porque así eh, me apoyan los, los chicos de administración, right? Ah, ok, ya lo voy a poner acá. Okay, okay. Sí, porque traté de ingresar el fin de semana y ayer y no pude. Ok, muy bien. Uh -huh. Y recuérdense que se tiene que hacer las tareas. Uh -huh. Y ya tenemos que tener finalizadas five homeworks. Yes. Ok. Ok, really good. Uh, Wendy, uh, if you don't have any more questions, that's no. it. Thanks for being here. Good more. night. <laughs> ok, good night. Ok. Ok, we're going to wait for the rest of the students. Wait, let me see. Waiting for okay.
Okay. Um, I was waiting for Jose Angel. <clears throat> as, as I mentioned before with Wendy, uh, because of the time, I would like to reinforce this information, right? And uh, when I put this part in this slide presentation, is is because of you guys, because you have to see uh, these important words. If you, um, how can I say this? If you learn these expressions, these free ones, it's gonna be easy for you to understand and to say um, something related to this. How do, okay, give me a minute. Okay. Okay, students. Um, I'm sorry. Veamos, es importante que se aprendan estas expresiones y estas palabras de enlace. Eh, because if you learn this word, uh, it's going to be easy for you to express your ideas, right? For example, when you want to say something that you think, you can say, in my opinion. If you want to talk about things that you did during your work time, I don't know, during something that, something, I'm sorry, that you did in your workplace, you can say it in my experience because you already did. In my case, in caso personal, in my case, and also um, these words, and then also in addition are really important because if you join the sentence that you make during the class and join with this connector, it's gonna be easy for you and you're gonna sound professional, right? Okay, so that's why it's really important for me to do this. Okay, let's see. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna wait for the rest of the students. Ok, um, quiero recordarles chicos que tienen que hacer las tareas diariamente, son cinco tareas por semana. I'm going to share my screen in order that you can understand this. Ok, I'm going to share. 
Okay. As you see, our uh, homeworks are really, really easy. We got this section number one. A homework one, two, three, four, five. All of these are for this week, right? Homework number one is gonna be easy because you just have to choose the best option that you want, right? Homework one, homework two, and you have to answer about um, according to has to or have to, Ivan and Robert. Uh, we are talking about plural and two person, so that's why we're gonna use has to or have to. You have to decide this, right? And so on, some singular, plural, per person. You can use don't have to, doesn't has to, or doesn't have to. You have to choose the best answer to this uh, to this uh, sentence, right? Okay, let's see. Number three, it's gonna be the same, the same story. It's really, it, we are talking about the third person. And number four, I, we're talking about me, right? So that's why you know what answer you're gonna choose here. Number five, in our partner, you have to choose if we are talking about singular or plural things, right? Okay, very good. Let me see. Homework number three, you have to do almost the same, right? Just the best answer. Homework number four, almost the same. You have to complete the sentence by choosing the correct answer. And let's see homework number five. You have to choose the correct answer to this uh, meaning of these words, right? Okay, amazing. I'm gonna wait uh, three minutes more. Ok chicos, esto ha sido todo por la clase de refuerzo, nos vemos, bye bye, see you tomorrow, see you later, have a good night.